Guys, I didn't start building my credit score until I was about 24 years old, and I used cash for pretty much everything up until that point. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you how to rebuild and how to take your score from zero to hero, <laughs> just like that. Actually, what is my credit score? Oh wow, almost 800. Not quite perfect, but I'm on the way to being free. Hey guys, my name is Andre Jick and welcome to my YouTube finance channel and whatever you do, do not turn on auto subtitles because YouTube thinks my last name is. Thanks YouTube. <laughs> so in today's video, we're gonna be talking about credit cards and I know there's a ton of these videos out there on YouTube, but hopefully none quite like this one because by the end of this video, I'm gonna give you an actionable step-by-step -step plan for repairing your broken credit or building it from zero all the way up to 750 and beyond. I'm gonna show you the best credit cards to do all of that with, and by the end of it, credit card companies are kinda of gonna hate you for knowing some of this stuff, so there go all of my non-existent sponsorships on my channel. Now before we get started, I wish someone had shown some of these perks to me because I would have actually been excited about building my credit. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the benefits. You may have heard about some of these, but I bet you haven't heard of all of these. And lastly, I wanna mention that all of the stuff inside this video is completely 100% free and I don't want you getting into debt and you won't be if you follow all the steps. So let's get started with the benefits. <laughs> So cash back, starting off with everybody's favorite, is 5% cash back on things like groceries, gas, and retail. You can then use that money as credit to pay your monthly balance. And that word you're gonna hear a lot throughout this video and generally throughout the credit world. And that means how much money you owe at the end of every single month. Roadside assistance. Not a lot of credit card companies advertise this one because they don't want you to know about it, but many major banks like Citibank, Chase, Capital One, and Visa all offer offer roadside assistance. And this can include boosting your dead battery, helping you with a flat tire, delivering fuel to you in case you run out of gas, or towing your car entirely if it just breaks down in the middle of the freeway. And the best one, and my favorite, if you're an idiot like me, and you lock yourself out by leaving your keys in your car. All you have to do is call them up on that number on the back of the credit card, and they'll come and help you right away. Hello, <laughs> it's me again. I left my keys in the car. Come help. Travel rewards. Now, some credit cards, instead of giving you cash back, for every dollar you spend, they'll actually give you a mile of travel to use towards any vacation. And I know that you know some people that have traveled the world with their credit card, but I bet what you didn't know is something called credit card churning. Google that, come back, and thank me later. <laughs> I don't have the patience to do it, it's a pain in the butt, but if you have the patience and you can master it, you can travel the world for absolutely free. It is incredible. So sign up bonuses. These are some of my favorite things to take advantage of and absolutely abuse whenever I can find great deals. But true story, I was able to get a free international trip by buying something that I was gonna buy anyway. So for example, you know that thing that you wanna buy, but you don't really need, and you know you shouldn't buy it, but you're going to anyway, that thing? Well, if you use your brand new credit card to pay for that thing, you can get huge cash incentives and travel rewards by meeting what's called minimum spend requirements. And they're amazing and I try to find them whenever I can. Consumer protection, another lesser known perk that's worth having credit cards just for this feature. You know how when you buy something nice or expensive, they always try to bully you into buying that expensive insurance policy to cover it? Well, credit cards offer a lot of this stuff for free. Like for example, car insurance. A lot of credit cards offer up to $50,000 of rental car insurance coverage, which means that covers pretty much the entire cost of the car. So when Corey and I went on our trip to Big Sur, they actually asked us if we wanted to pay an extra $50 per day. Mind you, the car costs $40 a day. They wanted us to pay $50 a day for their coverage. We declined because we paid with our credit card and we knew that was built in and free. Free and simple. So take advantage of this lesser known perk. And the other one is airlines. They're notoriously bad. And they charge us hundreds of dollars for the privilege of canceling or modifying our trip. But guess what? Credit cards can cover these fees up to $1,000 per year. So the next time that you book your trip, you don't have to get that cancellation policy 
Don't waste your money on that. Your credit card has you covered. Foreign transaction fee coverage. Now, if and when you travel, some credit cards, like the Amazon Prime credit card that I have here, charge you zero foreign transaction fees, which is great because last time I traveled to Hong Kong, I lost my iPhone, had to buy a new one, and I could have paid as much as 3% on the entirety of that purchase price, which I did because I didn't have that credit card. So when you travel abroad, make sure to use one of these. Warranty. So let's say you buy something expensive, like a lens, and then you accidentally <laughs> smash that like button. Wait, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's a coffee mug. Ah, oh, so your credit card can replace that item up to one year after purchasing it or double your original warranty if the item is stolen or damaged. And I would say American Express has the best perks for this. So after we build your credit score, and I promise we're about to get into it, I'm almost done with the perks, get yourself an Amex. So hopefully by now I've done a decent enough job at convincing you why you need to play this very, very important game. And when you beat this game, you get this perk or this achievement unlocked that allows you to save tens of thousands of dollars, if not well over a hundred thousand dollars when you buy things like a car or ultimately try to find lending for a house. That is huge guys. And it's just one of those things when you find that house and if you haven't played and beat that game, it's simply too late and it's gonna cost you for not having beat that game earlier. And unfortunately, there's no shortcuts unlike in a video game, there's no glitches you could take advantage of. You just have to play the game for a while and know what the rules are. And if you're still skeptical and you're wondering how are they able to offer all this stuff for free and how do they make money really? Well, they make their money off of people who don't watch these kind of YouTube videos. Videos. They make their profits off of ignorance and laziness, and you are neither. If you've made it this far, you've basically already won. So now let's get you started and get you up to speed on how to play this game. All right, finally, let's build your credit score. In order to do it, you first need what's called credit worthiness. And in order to have credit worthiness, you need a credit card. It's kind of like job hunting. In order to have this job, you need experience. But in order to have experience, you need a job. <laughs> it's a catch-22, so here's what you do. So first, regardless if you're rebuilding credit or starting from zero, get yourself a secured credit card. Now, I started with Capital One Secured, and that's what I recommend you do as well. Now, I've left links in the description below this video where you guys can do all the clicking and I've done all the homework for you, all the resources are there, but I started with that and I gave them $1,000 of my own money. You don't have to give them $1,000. You can go as low as $49, but regardless of what you give them, they're gonna use that money as a security deposit for them as collateral to test your credit worthiness. And whatever that amount ends up being, that's what they're gonna give you in return as something called revolving credit. The other alternative to Capital One is the Discover It Secured Credit Card. Now they have a slightly higher minimum starting at $200, but they also give you nice perks like cash back and on the eighth month after using that credit card, if you follow all the rules that I'm about to lay out in this video, they will review your account and if you pass, they're gonna give you your security deposit back to you and then they're going to give you a unsecured credit card so you can really start to build your score. However, at all costs, I want you to avoid Credit One Bank. Their logo is nearly identical to Capital One and they are sneaky little they have really high annual fees and high interest rate. Avoid at all costs, you don't need it. Please be careful. So regardless of whichever credit card you choose, once you receive it, congratulations, you have taken the first step to building your credit score. Now let me explain the rules of this game. And it is a game, it's the worst kind of game because it's not fun, it's not addicting, nobody explains the rules and you have to play it because all of your other friends are playing it. It's basically Minecraft. So here's what I want you to do. The first and most important thing is never carry a balance and always, always pay off your credit card in full every single month, no matter what. This is the first level we have to beat and it accounts for 35% of your entire score, which is huge. The first thing I want you to do after receiving that secured credit card is go online, it's super easy, set up auto pay, that way you'll never forget because if you don't, you will forget because I did. But the great thing is, if you forget once, that first month is something called the grace period. All you have to do is call them up and be like, hey guys, I'm really sorry. And you do have to apologize and they'll forgive that one time. But after that, 
So the next level you have to beat is level two, and that is the utilization rate, which means the amount of money that you use every single month versus how much money you have access to. And if you want that excellent score, you should use no more than 10% of your total monthly allowance. So going back to that secured card you initially got, if you put in a hundred bucks and that's how much they gave you back as revolving credit, you should use no more than 10% of that or $10 a month for an excellent credit score. So that's why I explained, depending on how much flexibility you want, like let's say if you want to buy groceries and food with it, maybe you should have a slightly higher deposit so you give yourself a little flexibility. However, one lesser known trick that I didn't know about is that theoretically, if you had nerves of steel, you could just give them 100 bucks and then once a month, literally just once, buy a pack of gum for $5 every single month, pay it off, and just with that one trick alone, build yourself an excellent credit score, assuming you do everything else correctly. Now, just for transparency and example sake, I have about five or six, maybe seven credit cards, and across all of them, I have about $40,000 available to me every single month. That means I should be spending no more than $4,000 or 10% of it. This accounts for 30% of your entire score, which is huge. Don't neglect this one, people forget about it. Oh, and also don't cheat and think you're clever by spending zero dollars. They need to see at least 1% utilization rate every single month. The third level you need to know about, you don't need to beat it, but you still know how, is types or variety of credit. Now, this sounds complicated. I promise it's really easy. There's just two of them you have to remember, installment loans and revolving credit. Installment loan is anything that you borrowed money to pay for. So this includes things like your personal loan, your college loans, your car payment, your mortgage, anything like that. Also, your phone and your internet bill do not count, okay? And also, don't get confused. You do not need to use your credit card to pay for these, okay? They just want to see that you're able to borrow money from someone and then consistently make payments. They don't care how, as long as you do them and you make them on time. And the other type of credit, your revolving credit, get it because it spins, <laughs> that's all of your credit card. So you're pretty much taken care of. If you're watching this video, you already have a credit card or you just got one. Now, both of these installment loans and revolving credit make up just 10% of your entire score. So please don't go buying something and getting yourself into debt just to please your credit score. You don't need it to build an excellent score. And the fourth level to master is the number of inquiries. Now, when I first started applying, I applied to eight credit cards because I'm dumb. <laughs> and I got declined by all of them. And they make up 10% of your credit score. So anytime you inquire about borrowing money, they inquire about your credit report and your score, and that dings you. And again, although it's only 10%, they add up fast. And the worst part, they take 24 months or two years to fall off your report. In fact, I still have two of them waiting to fall off of my report. So at any given time, please don't apply to more than two credit cards at any given time, trust me. And the last level to beat is kind of the ultimate boss and that is age of history. This is the one that hurts me the most because my history is pretty young, but you can get to 700 and beyond with just one year. But if you wanna to get to that 800, that's really, it's gonna take you five to 10 years to get to that point because this accounts for 15% of your entire credit score. Now that you know how to use your credit cards like a boss, you need to know how to check your credit score. You can do this by performing what's called a soft inquiry so as not to arouse your score by performing a hard inquiry. Remember we talked about those, they ding your score. So you can do this by downloading the free Credit Karma app. It's simple, it's easy to use, I use it all the time. And also your credit cards sometimes allow you to check your score for free without penalizing you at all. And when you check your score, you may find as many as three different credit scores from the three different credit bureaus. They are TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. Together, they will average to make what's called the FICO score, and that's the score that gets reported to lenders when you borrow money. Your score will range anywhere from 300 to 850. Now, anything that is 750 and beyond is going to get you that prime rate when you borrow money. Anything that is above 750 is just for showing off. So quickly, here are some things that do not affect your credit score whatsoever. How much money you have, doesn't matter how much money you make, 
doesn't matter. I used to think it mattered, but it absolutely doesn't. Smashing the like button. It doesn't matter to them, but it matters to me, so smash the like button. Using debit cards or gift cards to build your score. No, they will not. And lastly, using your credit card at a gas station. No, it will not hurt your score. And if you follow all of these steps for nine months to one year, at the end of that, your credit score should shoot up to 700 and beyond, at which point you're going to get flooded every single month with credit card offers and banks throwing money at you. For the most part, I want you to say no. Keep playing this game like PewDiePie and you never know when you're gonna need your credit score to buy that overpriced house you really don't need. <laughs> all right, guys, love you all. See you very soon. Please smash the like button and subscribe. My life depends on it. Okay, bye, love you all, bye. I came straight through the dirt and my sleeves pulled up and my head held high. No shirt, no shoes, but a beating heart and I made sure that my tongue was tied. Try to shut up and just put up with all the lies they told. Guess this is what it's like when you grow up. I'm feeling old. Some say it's normal when you get formal. It comes with age, what a mistake. Cause when I was a kid, I dreamt of something greater. Like standing on a stage and hearing all those people shout my name. But now I'm hanging low and looking for someone to blame. So I'm not gonna lose my Somehow